Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. Sorry it didn't come out last week, I was away, but we've got back-to-back -back weeks of Assassin's Creed The Truth, so this week and next week will be new episodes for this series. This week we're talking about why Assassin's Creed Empire is real. So if you don't know what Assassin's Creed Empire is, it's the supposed leaked Assassin's Creed game coming out in 2017. Set in ancient Egypt, and really we don't know anything else but that setting, that time period, and the release window of 2017. So this came from first a supposed Ubisoft developer on 4chan leaking information on the next game and explaining that Ubisoft will take a year off in 2016 and not release an Assassin's Creed game. It was then corroborated by Kotaku that that was in fact the case. So, I'm going to talk about today why I think Assassin's Creed Empire is in fact 100% legit, 100% real, and we will see it in 2017. Now, first of all, Egypt is a huge historical setting to place an Assassin's Creed game, something lots of fans have wanted or been afraid of happening for a very, very long time now. There's been hints all the way back to 2010 when comic book and poster images of Assassin's Creed Egypt sort of settings or spin-offs kind of were put up on the internet even though they were just kind of comic art and nothing set in a sort of game setting. There's been hints all throughout the franchise that Egypt is an important location and country with cities like Cairo and Alexandria being at the forefront of those important historical areas. From things like Arno sending an apple of Eden to Cairo, from Altair's son travelling to Alexandria to raise his family after Masyaf was abandoned. There's a whole lot of different hints and heaps more throughout the franchise that Egypt is an important location. In fact, the Assassin's Creed Council website has a whole site page with lists of hints all throughout the series and franchise that possibly hint and link somehow to Egypt, whether it could be to do with a future game, or really in most cases just to discuss in a relevant setting of the games it was mentioned in, because it had some sort of significance at that time, not actually hinting to any future game. But I'll leave the link to that page in the description so you guys can go snoop around for yourself. Of course there was the Kotaku leak, which is a huge thing. Kotaku have leaked Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Unity, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. In fact, back then it was Assassin's Creed Victory, and it was only two weeks after Assassin's Creed Unity had released. Kotaku are responsible for all of these leaks in Assassin's Creed games over the past three years. So, they're pretty reliable when it comes to this, however, this is their weakest leak so far. Because they're going off hearsay and we're supposed to believe what this guy's heard. Now, there's no real reason not to believe it as of yet, but because there just wasn't enough info at the time it leaked, it's kind of like, well, who really knows? He mentioned certain things from Ubisoft are going to take 2016 off was one major point and they'll release the next game in 2017. They talked about the fact that it'll be set in ancient Egypt, also mentioning settings like ancient Rome, but they're not too sure on that. And they did discuss, though, that the character they'd use could potentially have a trilogy or sequels of games in his settings that can expand then from Egypt, who knows, to possibly Italy or Greece at that ancient period of time. They then went on, of course, to mention other things such as why Ubisoft is doing this because of the Unity debacle and how that affected Syndicate sales and all sorts of things like that. It was a very interesting leak. However, it didn't have any screenshot leaked images or poster items or anything like that had in the last three years. Unity, they had screenshots. Victory, they had screenshots. Black Flag, they had a screenshot and a poster image. Like, they've had evidence, whereas this is all hearsay, so it's tough at first to believe. However, as many of you probably know, unless you've been living under a rock, Ubisoft announced themselves on their blog that the team behind Assassin's Creed will be taking 2016 off and we'll talk later about what they're going to be doing for the future of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Now that's huge news, obviously because that's 50% of the Kotaku leak 100% confirmed. 
So when Kotaku just come out of nowhere and talk about that, as well as of course the supposed developer that leaked and said that same stuff on 4chan that Kotaku did corroborate. When they go and say that, that's kind of, like I said, hearsay. You don't know for sure, but when Ubisoft just so happened to two weeks later confirm 50% of it, it goes from just being a guess that Kotaku or this 4chan supposed developer made to, okay, clearly they know more than we know and they know something going on inside Ubisoft. So that, to me, itself is confirmation for me that everything else they've said is true. Now, does that mean that in the next two years until Empire supposedly comes out, changes won't be made, there's not possible revamps to certain things, and there could be even some huge major changes that they're talking about now? Of course, there's a huge chance that that'll happen. Of course that could happen. However, I do still believe that if they're setting it in Egypt, that is what they're going to go with in two years. That's what we will expect in 2017, for the setting of Assassin's Creed. There's also, of course, the fact that it's said to be the Black Flag team working on Empire. Now, if you look at the Black Flag team, you have Ashraf Ismail, who was the creative director or the game director, and you had Darby McDevitt, who was the lead writer. Now, both of those people are supposedly working on a top secret Ubisoft project right now. So that already is a huge indication that this is the game they're working on. You also have Ashraf Ismail himself, who, when Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was about to come out, said that he'd love to make a game in Egypt. He wasn't confirming anything, he just mentioned that that's a setting he'd like to see. Now, it just so happens that this is the supposed next setting, and he's also working on a secret project, and he's a part of the team that's working on it. You know, it, it's so much lining up that it's just so hard not to believe, and to me, it just confirms all those things. Now that to me is the reasons why Empire is real in a real world sense. Now I'd like to talk about my theories of the game and why it makes sense in the actual story of Assassin's Creed that they will be going back to ancient Egypt. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the modern day. Now having two years and a bit of a gap to kind of learn from their mistakes, see what we want as fans, they have time to develop. Modern Day is a small section of the games, so that's something they might not have even started working on yet, and they have two full years, plenty of time for them to not only make a Modern Day for the next game, but also start to plan further along. That's an amazing thing for this. Now, in my opinion, we're looking at Desmond's son. Now, there's the whole Desmond Sun rumors and all that stuff, or at least someone who has very similar genetic DNA to him, possibly cousin, brother, something fucking crazy. I'm gonna go with Desmond Sun. It's something that's the most interesting and that makes the most sense, story wise. Now, he's also a sage. Now, this is something dropped back in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. These are huge hints to the future of the franchise and where it's going. I don't think it's random, especially the whole sage factor. Sages are very important right now in Assassin's Creed. Now, the reason I say this and why this totally is going to make sense for Empire and Egypt being the setting, is that when it comes to reliving genetic DNA, the further you go back, the harder it is to read a person's genome in the Animus and the Helix, because it gets more diluted the further you go back, because you've got way more ancestors back then, there's so much DNA that's kind of gone around, that by the time you get to modern day, it's harder the further you go back to get proper memories and to relive all those things. That's just lore of Assassin's Creed and the Animus. That's just what we know happens. However, in Unity, there was the Project Phoenix cutscene that totally discussed all of this and how the sages work. So why did the Triple Helix theory gain so much traction? Why did Rosalind Franklin's x-rays seem to confirm it? It turns out that their initial samples had been taken from small traces of precursor DNA, the rare genes of an ancient race embedded in our own. We now know that triple helix DNA is the foundation of the precursor genome. It is the genetic Rosetta Stone of our age. If we can crack it open, if we can sequence the full precursor genome, there is no limit to the knowledge we will gain. Using Animus technology, precursor history will be open to us for the first time ever. Ancient languages will be unlocked, and ancient technology will be ours for the taking. Imagine what will be possible if we master the technology that underpins the pieces of Eden. Such discoveries would surpass 100-fold the splitting of the atom. Last year, we located a rich sample of precursor DNA in a donor 
whose genes contained human and precursor DNA at an incredible 25 to 1 ratio. Our work will begin with this sample. Our goal is to unravel the triple helix, sequence the precursor genome, and change the world for the better. Last year, a stair girl acquired the body of a man we call a sage, one of a rare breed of humans with a surplus of ancient DNA. This sparked a search for more sages in the present and in the past. So as you see, sages have the triple helix. The double helix is what us mere mortals, normal humans have. That's the DNA we're used to having, such as Desmond. But let's just say, Desmond's son, the sage, goes into an animus. Abstergo or the assassins can use that DNA, the triple helix, and go back, like the Project Phoenix trailer said, further than ever before. It's got high concentration of that DNA, it's more accessible to go back that far. Both you can relive the memories, at least in theory, of first civilization members themselves, but also it'll be clearer to go back further than ever. So that itself makes sense to have a sage as a character, like Desmond's son, to be a future protagonist of the franchise, and that'll help us be able to go back to settings like ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, that works for us. It works in the lore of Assassin's Creed, and it works for where the game's supposedly going, especially with how it's all been set up. The leak also talked about having multiple games for the same character, like Ezio Auditore had. He's the only character to have a trilogy. I'll tell you, got about a game and a half, Assassin's Creed 1 and Parts of Revelations. And of course, Bloodlines, the side game that you kind of had. So I guess overall, I guess you got two full games, if you want to put it that way. But it's something when you look back at the franchise that they tried to steer away from after Ezio because they felt that people were getting sick of the character. And now, once you've had a billion different assassins in the last four or five years since Ezio, they can look back and realize, oh shit, our most successful period of the franchise with interest was when we had one main character. Now, it doesn't have to be forever. We all knew when Ezio's time was done, it was done. We were happy to move on. It was the right time. We didn't have it too little. We didn't have it too late. It was, it was a good timing, but that doesn't mean you can't do multiple games ever again for an assassin. I talked about it last year, I made a whole video on it, of why Ubisoft need to make multiple games for the same protagonist and not change it every year. I also said in that video that I don't think it should be Jacob and Evie, I think we need to go back further, get a good time period, like the ancient times of Egypt, Rome and Greece, where you have one interesting time period that you can have one game in, and then you've got all these interesting areas in that same time period that you can travel to in the next game and use the same character like Ezio who went from you know Florence and Venice in 2 to Rome then to Constantinople. You have interesting settings with multiple areas in that setting. You can have multiple games with one character. It's something that I've wanted for a long time, I've advocated for. Ubisoft look like they're going to be doing it thanks to this leak or at least are contemplating that concept. I think it's a good idea, especially with having the year off. It could be a great way to move the franchise forward, especially with that ancient period being so vital. So who knows what could be going on in ancient times to see how the pyramids were built, perhaps, to see all this sort of stuff that the first civilization could be more involved in back when the people knew about them and they were worshipped like gods and things like that. There's so much we could get from a time period and having a character go to all these interesting places like Greece, like ancient Rome. I know we've gone to Rome, but ancient Rome's totally different. And of course, ancient Egypt. There's so many different settings to have multiple characters in there. And getting back to those roots, you don't have to stay with that one character forever. Two, three games, that's great. Then move on and do two or three games again with another character. Committing to those characters keeps us as fans invested in the games and it keeps us interested and gives us a reason to play because we're like oh i want to play this character because i want to know what's going to happen next year i want to know what's going to happen the year after because i'm playing as this character you want to invest your time and make it worth it by continuing on and then when it's time we will know it's time and be like yeah fair enough you've had three games with them let's or her let's move on and then we do the same thing it's a great sign it's good to see from the supposed leak and i think it would be great for the franchise in that time period and I think it's great in terms of Juno and all the secrets and things that are going on in the modern day with sages that could link going back that far and finding some interesting stories and some truth about maybe how to stop Juno who knows there's a lot that could possibly happen I think the time off is a great thing 
for the planning of the franchise and for Ubisoft to really work on developing the future of the franchise with ancestor characters and also a modern day protagonist with a continuing modern day story and plan to go forward without just kind of figuring out as they go along. Let's plan for the future and hopefully there's no games every year ever again and we go every two years. That's a perfect amount of time, especially because you have multiple teams working on it. It gives everyone more time. You can invest more people in it. It's a great sign for the franchise and these are my theories for reasons of why it could possibly be the next setting but also of course the reasons I think it really is a real setting in terms of all the things we know about the leaks about Kotaku about Ubisoft that's why I think Assassin's Creed Empire is real whether it's called Empire or not it's a codename who knows but Egypt is the setting we're going to next and because we have sages because we have Desmond's son and because we have all these things we need to find out to stop Juno these are why we're going back so far there's so much going on I'm very very encouraged by what's going on for the future of the franchise and I look forward to doing more theory videos on the future of the franchise as we go along with this series thanks guys for watching look forward to more next week as well as going forward for Assassin's Creed The Truth and I'll see you guys next time and of course let me know your thoughts of why Assassin's Creed Empire is real and what you'd like to see for the franchise go going forward both in modern day and for our ancestor character is egypt something something you want would you like to go have sequels for that character in ancient rome ancient greece who knows let me know in the comment section below guys thanks for watching i'll see you later